Hello, I'm Brother Tyler, and uh, welcome to the Book of Mormon Scripture Challenge. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bible. Now, if you don't have your scriptures with you, please pause the video and go grab them. Um, so, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, we have a terrible distrust for the Bible. Now, it is is to no surprise that we feel that way about, um, about the Bible because of our stance on its validity. Um, in the Articles of Faith, number eight, we believe that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God only as far it is as it is translated correctly. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. Now, if you think about that, if someone told you that they are only on, that they are honest, except for a few things, we immediately place them in our mind as someone who is dishonest. Um, that is what we have done in our minds with the Bible. Now, I want us to think about it in a different way. If someone tells you that they're only honest when Bob is in the room, then we know that that person can be trusted whenever Bob is in the room. Now, that is actually really how we should be thinking about it. And I'm going to give you two reasons why. The first is, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we should trust the Bible because it is always honest when compared with the Book of Mormon. It, if we ever have doubts, what we should do is we should open up the Book of Mormon and compare it to make sure that it is correct. Second, as modern believers with a mountain of resources, we should trust the Bible because it is honest whenever it is compared to the original languages. Now, the Bible was written in Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New Testament. And so Bible translations that use those languages, such as the interlinear, they use Greek and Hebrew, and they have the explanations for grammar and word choice and all those kind of things to help you understand. So for example, let's look at a scripture with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Luke 22, they're having their, their last supper. In verse 20, it says, Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the interlinear. You're going to see some word comparisons in here. And the cup likewise, after which having supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in the blood of me, which for you is being poured out. As you can see, a direct translation does not sound quite right. When we read it, it is uh, when it is written in Greek. Um, anyone that speaks another language can tell you that uh, in translation alterations need to be made for it to read normally in another language. Um, having served my mission in Brazil, I recognize that in Portuguese. Now, there's also a word choice that alter the meaning in this phrase. And so let's look at that. During the Last Supper, the Lord passed the cup of wine and he told his disciples that it was the new covenant in his blood. In the King James Bible um, that we study from, it claims that it is a testament. <clears throat> yes, we do partake in remembrance of him, but the sacrament is an ordinance renewing our covenant at baptism. So this word choice was most likely made due to the message that the wine should be drank in remembrance, which is a form of testament. Um, and so, um, we can see those kind of things when we look at that translation. Uh, we can see that uh, the, tra the translation of Testament and Covenant in the, Book of, in the Book of Mormon. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a verse in 3 Nephi 18 when Jesus is amongst the Nephites. And so, 7 through 11, it says, And this shall ye do in remembrance of my body, which I have shown unto you, and it shall be a testament unto you. Uh, unto the Father, that ye do always remember me. And if ye do always remember me, ye shall have my spirit to be with you. So we have testament right there. Let's continue in verse 8. And it shall come to pass that when ye have these words, he commanded his disciples that they should take of the wine of the cup and drink of it, and that they should also give unto the multitude that they might drink of it. So right here we have that's a commandment. In verse 9. And it came to pass that they did so, and did drink of it, and were filled. And they gave unto the multitude, and they also did drink, and they were filled. So we have them passing around and drinking. 
And when the disciples had done this, Jesus said unto them, Blessed are ye for this thing which ye have done, for this is fulfilling my commandments. And this doth witness unto the Father that ye are willing to do that which I have commanded you. Okay. Now, from the Book of Mormon, we can learn that when the Nephites partook of the wine, uh, you know, they were, um, um, sorry, uh, when they took of the, the wine and the bread, they were blessed for fulfilling the commandment and witnessing unto the Father that they were willing to follow all that they have been, um, not given, but commanded. Um, and that is the basis of the covenant. Uh, we can also see that it is a testament in these verses. So um, we can see that in Luke, it wasn't really wrong. It was an okay translation to make. However, in the comparison, we can see that correctly, that uh, when we can see it correctly, we can learn more from it, and we can learn that it is a covenant. In this example, we can see that if you are willing to take the time to compare the scriptures, then you will be able to learn a lot more from the Word. Now today, we can look at, uh, we can look at a way that we can prove the Bible with the blessings of modern resources. Um, having done this, I hope you're able to see how we can trust the Bible. Over the next few videos, we'll look at more ways that we can look at the Bible. And we're going to look at the scriptures to learn from them. Um, and in the end, we will see that it is important to do the Book of Mormon challenge using the Bible. Now, for the next few videos, I'd like to use scriptures from the Book of Mormon to help us understand. So to prepare yourself, please open your, your Book of Mormon and read 2 Nephi 29. And that will be the focus of our discussion.